Hello everyone. Um, it's been a little while since I made a video. I've been busy with some household projects and some uh, stuff going on at work that's kept me busy and uh, just haven't had much time to come out in the shop. But I did want to give a, uh, a, a update video here and also do a little fun project that I've been thinking about for a little while. And here's some of the, the pre-project workings that um, I've been messing with, which you can see are some fairly hefty little chips. So that's one thing we're going to do is uh, make some heavy cuts on the Monarch and see how it does. The other things I wanted to mention are uh, I've got some other upcoming uh, videos that are, are hopefully going to be good. Not too exciting to, to spoil anything, but um, uh, I do have some, some good content coming forward here pretty soon that I will try and stay on top of. Uh, my wife and son are actually going out of town for about a week, so I will have some extra garage time this week upcoming just to uh, spend some more time out here, make a couple of videos hopefully, and get some things done around the shop. Um, hopefully soon I'll, I'll have some exciting news about uh, making the shop a little bigger. I've uh, been working toward that for a couple of years now, getting uh, financially prepared. It's a hugely expensive project around here to add on to your garage. Nothing like, you know, San Francisco, but uh, it is still a lot of money when you, uh, when you aren't just dripping in wealth and don't want to go into debt for things like that. So um, just wanted to uh, update you guys on that. Hopefully soon we'll be breaking ground on an expanded shop. Um, we'll see how it goes. There's still some question marks there. I'm still working through quotes and trying to figure out what kind of contractors I need to be using. Um, quotes have been all over the place on things like concrete and uh, framing. And so I've got to whittle down and, and choose the best guys I can. I'd love to just use a, a general contractor and have him come in and say, hey, we're going to do the whole project. Uh, we're going to get permits and we're going to get the, the inspections done and you just write us a check and it'll all be done. Um, and I would love to do that, but the, the quotes I've been getting have been just absurd for allowing someone else to do all the work. Um, I, I don't know how much work I'm going to handle myself personally. It may be, I may do some framing. I may do some of the electrical or all of the electrical. We'll see. Since it depends on how motivated I am and how much money it's going to save me. Um, but the, the guys that could, you know, do it all as a turnkey project want like 125 bucks a square foot which doesn't go very far uh, when, you're, when you're wanting to stay under a reasonable budget. You know, a, a normal shop that I'm, I'm planning would be over a hundred thousand bucks, which is just like, that's ridiculous. That's almost as much as my, my first house cost me. So um, anyway, we'll, we'll see what happens, but just wanted to give you guys a little heads up there that that's what has been going on. And uh, we'll get a couple of things going on here. I've got some tools that need to be looked at and uh, some things that need some repair. So we'll, we'll dig into that in the next couple of videos. But first, why don't we make some heavy cuts on the Monarch? And to start off, I'm going to show you what I did in kind of pre-video testing here. So here's some of the chips I made with the Monarch. Uh, I guess this is actually about a week and a half ago, just uh, messing around and seeing what kind of big cuts we could take with it. And uh, I think where I ended up was about 200 thou. So when they on the dial that is, 200 on the dial, and the chips ended up being about, uh, you know, 215, 220 when it's all said and done, just how things go, I guess. So this is uh, 4140 heat treated, or non-heat non treated steel. It's, you know, in its annealed condition. The interesting thing, and maybe somebody out there has a comment for exactly why this is. I asked a buddy at work that's very knowledgeable on these kinds of things. And he wasn't sure, it didn't, didn't make a lot of sense to him either. But the feed rate that I cut these at does not match the thickness of the chips. And I, that's what I would expect, is the, the chips to be about what I set on the, the dial. And the feed rate was set to about, I think it was like 3.7 on, on these particular cuts when I was taking the, the deepest cut I, I took. And yet the chips are 20 thou thick, give or take. So measuring these, you know, at random, they were mostly between about 17 and 21 thou chip thickness. So I thought that was, uh, that was pretty interesting that they would be thicker than the feed rate suggests. I did test the, the compound, or um, not the compound, but the cross slide, you know, putting it in a, a feed rate and then manually turning the chuck one revolution and the indicator showed, yep, that's exactly 
the distance traveled on the cross slide when you put in a, a given figure into the gearbox, which doesn't surprise me at all. You know, it's an all mechanical system, so there's no, not like there's some servo motor that's getting excess voltage and so it's over traveling or something. You know, this is a, a gear fed setup, so there's, there's not any reason for things to, to not appear that way. So obviously there's something going on there that I, I'm not understanding. So if you do understand it, please let me know. Uh, I'd like to satisfy my curiosity. It doesn't really matter. It's not like I'm uh, high production here and trying to maximize time on the machine to pump out as many parts as possible in a given period of time or whatever. This is just for me to understand better how this is all working. Again, I'm still pretty new to this, so I've, I've got an awful lot to learn. So let's go over to the lathe and see about cutting some big chips. So here's the setup on the machine. We are going 227 RPM. I've got a CNMG 433 insert here. Uh, I can't remember which uh, maker this is. I wanna say this is my Sumitomo that I've got here. This is actually a, a, one of the tools that I got from Mr. Uh, Mr. Dedman, so I appreciate that. Um, I, I keep meaning to order some heavy, heavy steel inserts for stuff like this, and I will. I just keep forgetting to do it. So what we're gonna try first is we'll go with that, uh, that 200 thou depth of cut. So I've got my indicator set here. A must on this is to uh, lock the carriage when we, we take a big cut like that. And I'm gonna put on my uh, face mat, face shield. Uh, the chips coming off of this thing at those big depths of cut are hot, hot, hot. I uh, just pray nothing jumps up and hits the camera. So we're gonna go about 50, there's 100. And there's 200. So lock the carriage right at 200. Okay, one thing I didn't do at first when I was going before was really cranking down on the T-post nut here. Not T-post, but the uh, tool post nut. So it's pretty, pretty snug on there. Give it another little grab. And then the tool is on there nice and tight. I'm trying to think of what else I need to remember here. All right, well, here goes nothing, eh? Oops. This is your friend. So it looks like that's not enough uh, feed. So let's bump it up a little bit. Let's go, let's see. There we go. So no problem there. 200 thou depth of cut with a uh, seven and a half thou feed rate, something like that. Nice and shiny silver, so it's not straining at all. So that is cruising. That's 250 thou depth of cut, seven and a half thou feed rate. That's interesting. And just below 300 RPM. So let's uh, crank in some more, what the heck. Okay, reset a little bit here. So I think we're just running out of speed and I'm just wary of cranking this, the lathe up too fast um, just cause I'm still unfamiliar with the machine and, and don't want to kill myself. Uh, the insert still looks okay. What we did is came back out to the full OD and we're in 300 thou once again. 
and still at that 7,000, uh, 7 7.3 thou per, per uh, revolution, uh, just under 300 RPM. Oh boy, let's see what happens. Oh boy, <laughs> that is fun. 300 thou, depth of cut. Machine handled it no problem. I gave up way, way before the machine was going to. I think we'll call it good right there. So here's the results of our little experiment. Uh, ending at 300 thou on the dial and what these actually read. is around 325. So cuts a little bit um, deeper than, than you dial in and that's just because it's pulling, pulling into the work with all that tool pressure. So you can see based on the color of the chips, it wasn't getting pushed very hard. I've got some that are straw color, but most of these are just, you know, steel blue. Not getting terrible amount of heat into them. Not turning, uh, getting towards black where they're just really, really getting cooked. And of course, with the coins there, you see just how, how chunky these things are. Got a lot of, a lot of gravity in there. So uh, I'd love to get a, a big piece of shafting, something like four and a half, five inches in diameter of a free machining material, like 4140 would be great. And then uh, be able to dial it in with some turning and make some real consistent uh, curl over chips with the right insert and just go bananas on the depth of cut until, until we can't anymore. Uh, with the facing cut, your surface speed is literally changing throughout the cut. And so it's, it's hard to get consistent, decent results. And obviously I didn't, but still pretty fun. Uh, that, that kind of depth of cut for a home shop machine. Um, I'm feeling uh, pretty, pretty happy with that. So thanks for checking out the video guys and Leave a comment below if you have any feedback or you want to ask me a question or you've got a big piece of material that you want to give to me. That'd be all right, too. And uh, we will see you guys hopefully very soon with another video. Have a good one.